Let's turn our attention to this now. Government and law enforcement have been grappling with trying to stop illegal mining. In fact, one of the suggestions to curtail the practice is to empower Zamazamas and turn them into artisanal miners. But this suggestion has been shot down by Mineral Resources Minister Gweda Mandashi. So, can this idea realistically work? We speak to Hotato Ntlengeto from the National Association of artisanal miners who joins us now. Hotatso, I've seen a video making the rounds on social media uh, of these Amazamas. Uh, this one gentleman shoveling sand and from the sand emerges someone. Obviously, these are people who know what they're doing, but if you have an untrained eye like mine, you can see the danger of what Zamazamas go through on a daily basis. So to even suggest that they get some form of par empowerment, would that even be a thing that would be welcomed by, by the uh, mineral resources um, and energy um, department? And good afternoon to your viewers. Yes, Zamazamas is a highly dangerous activity and um, it's, it's not only health and safety, but we're also talking about security. We're also talking about the criminality of the actual activity. So it is quite dangerous. But one thing we stress as the National Association of Artisanal Miners is that we actually draw the distinction between artisanal miners and Zamazama miners. Zamazama miners are syndicate based often human trafficked Lesotho and Mozambique nationals that are exploited because they're poor. While artisanal miners are usually community based or traditionally based and they mine in communities um, and they usually have the the permission of a chief or the headman of a community or even the local community uh, policing groups. So this is a very distinct difference. And I think because the normal eye or the untrained eye doesn't know the difference, then they tend to cluster it into the two. So actually, we agree with the minister when we, when he says you can't train Zamazama miners to become artisanal miners because, first of all, they're two different things. And third of all, the first one, which is Zamazama mining, is actually syndicate-based. What would then your association's assistance be in this regard? Because obviously there is a growing trend daily of Zamazamas mining illegally in any part of Johannesburg. Just, just in the last 24 hours, we were showing visuals from uh, the west side of Johannesburg. But this happens all across Gauteng. Um, as an association, how, how would you want to step in to, to assist? We want to assist by actually being whistleblowers. The problem is we know what's going on in the activities on the ground, who the big guys are, and who are the influential people who are actually running syndicates. But as artisanal miners, we are also intimidated by these gangs and these kingpins, and therefore we do not have that protection. And even worse, we are actually brutalized by police because we are clustered as one thing with Zamazama miners. So the first thing would actually be to have that protection so that we can be whistleblowers to to be able to, to curb the Zamazama mining and rather empower the artisanal miners themselves. And then I think the second thing, we as the National Association of Artisanal Miners are the only national association of artisanal miners at this point in time. And we are calling all legal um, artisanal miners who want to become who want to become who want to become part of the permitting process and we say we can help them to do so because we are in talks with the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy as we speak. And how does one become Hotatso an artisanal miner? Where do they find you? And to that end, I want you to talk to me about just the criminal elements that exist within illegal mining because we understand there's a lot of money uh, that is involved, which is why there is a, a resurgence of Zamazamas. You can get rid of them today. Next week, there are 100 more uh, that prop up elsewhere. Yeah, that is really the the crux of the matter, right? Because no matter how much they try and take out um, people from underground, there's more popping up to be able to take their place. Um, and that is because it's not the punitive measures are not being taken on the actual kingpins. Now, the Minerals Council called this level four and five, which we do not see in the illegal mining chain. Whereas level one is the artisanal miner, level two is the actual gold buyer, and level three is the distributor. Now, level four and five is the actual international trader and the exporter. Now, we never see these people because these are the people that change the gold 
from illegal to legal. So we often don't see these people. They could be influential people. They could be political figures. And sometimes this is why there's no real political will for people to actually, um, or the government to actually curb illegal mining because they may or may not have some hands in the cookie jar. Interesting. Uh, right now, what would be the best uh, solution in terms of uh, it being tangible and it can be done right now in real time? What would, as an association, would you suggest? What we suggest as an association, and we've called for it to the DMRE, we want the DMRE to sit down with the National Association of Artisanal Miners and to put down strategic guidelines for the for the implementation of the artisanal mining policy. Because if you give people an alternative and you say, here is artisanal mining, we are willing to legalize it, we will see the curb of Zama Zama mining by mere distinction of people wanting to leave they're being exploited and want to be empowered so we say let us sit down with the dmre have a round table and actually start implementing the policy that was uh, promulgated last year already thank you so much for your time this afternoon speaks for and is from the national association of artisanal miners